Hi there, and welcome to this short review of the Titanic Hotel Gendarmen Markt Berlin. It is probably best that we start this review by looking at the location of the area of the hotel. So this is a view of Berlin Mitte, Berlin city centre, looking east. In the foreground, it, the wooded area, is Berlin Tiergarten. And I'm sure you can pick out in the background the famous funk term in Alexanderplatz, the TV Tower. Here is the Reichstag building, and here is the iconic Brandenburg Gate and Unter den Linden Street. The Gendarmenmarkt is located about one kilometer southeast of the Brandenburg Gate, marked here with the blue arrow. The Gendarmenmarkt is a famous 17th century square that takes its name for the military regiment that had stables here during the 1700s. It is the site of three iconic historic buildings. The Berlin Concert Hall, the Französische Dom and the Deutsche Dom, French Church and German Church. The word Dom here signifies dome, not its usual meaning in German of cathedral. The buildings were all very badly damaged during World War II and have been restored since 1945. The square itself today is regularly used for events such as Christmas markets. The Titanic Hotel itself is located on Französische Strasse, about 200 metres north of the square, and the nearest U-Bahn station is Haus Platz, about the same distance. The Titanic Hotel is a five-star hotel, owned and operated by the German-Turkish Titanic Group. The original building dates from the early 1800s, and it was designed by architect Karl Friedrich Schinkel. But like much of Berlin Mitte, it was heavily damaged by aerial bombing and then Soviet shelling during World War II and has been extensively restored. From the end of World War II until 1989, it was part of the segregated East Berlin and was being used as an apartment block. The name Titanic has actually nothing to do with the infamous ship that sank in the early 1900s. Also, make sure when you're booking this hotel that you get the correct one. There are two Titanic hotels in central Berlin, both five star. The other being Titanic Hotel Chelsea. This Titanic Hotel Gendarme Mark was built in the year 2015. It has six floors, 208 double rooms and 14 suite. The main entrance to the hotel is located on the quite busy Französische Strasse and because of that it's not that convenient for pickups and drop-offs. There is usually a doorman on duty and a bellhop service for your luggage. The reception is on your left as you go through the double doors. When I checked in there were three check-in agents on duty and I found that check-in was really quick, really efficient. Although I do speak German, all the check-in was conducted in English and I do believe that Turkish language is also available if you need it. Whilst my luggage was on its way up to my room, it gave me the ideal opportunity to have a look around and film in the hotel lobby area. And I have to say what I found I was really impressed with. The Titanic Hotel has really ornate fixture fittings in the lobby area. The area itself is reasonably large. The Titanic sells itself as a Turkish-German cultural fusion. However, I actually found the feel of the lobby was much more classical European than Turkish. Also, unlike many hotels, the layout affords a bit of privacy. Some hotel lobbies are all open and everybody can see your business. Here, you can find a little alcove to hide yourself away in. I'll let you have a look for yourself.
okay, I think it's time to go up to the second floor and check out my room. There are three gold door elevators which serve this hotel. They open directly onto the lobby and call time for them is really, really quick. Unlike some hotels, these are elevators are for guests only and the hotel has separate service elevators. On the bedroom floors, the elevators open directly into the corridor. Other than a marble surround, there is no lift lobby. However, I didn't find that elevator noise was an issue from my room. The corridors have quite a dark theme, with wall lights and illuminated room signs. The layout of the hotel for each bedroom floor is rectangular around a central courtyard, so you can't really get lost, just keep turning right until you come back on yourself. Being a European hotel, unlike American hotels, we don't have amenities on our floor, so there's really nothing up here other than your bedroom. So, I booked a classic double room in the Titanic in September 2022, which cost me €230 Euros a night, including breakfast. That works out at uh, 200 GB pounds or 205 US dollars. Let's see what that buys you. So here we are, room 428 on the fourth floor. Compared to the corridor, the room is very brightly lit as you enter it with a long corridor towards the living space, white matte walls with a natural wood floor. The bathroom is on your left as you pass it. Certainly on first impressions, you'll find that the room is not that huge with the bed taking up 80% of the available space. There are at the end of the room traditional double windows that open out onto a Juliet balcony, which gives you a view into the building central courtyard. The courtyard itself is not visitable or usable space. And if you look down, you will see the roof lantern, which is the roof of the spa in the basement of the hotel. Also, all rooms look into the courtyard, so there is a bit of a privacy issue because everybody's room looks under everybody else's. Looking back at the room from the windows towards the corridor, you can see that there is a mirrored end wall. Make of that what you will, it's not everybody's taste, which features a centrally mounted 40-inch LCD TV, which has the standard hotel TV channels. So, scanning across towards the desk and the minibar, we're now going to take a stroll back towards the door past the bathroom, which is now on our right, and you'll notice that the corridor has a lot of underutilised or wasted space. I will quickly show you the storage space and wardrobes. I think I'll speed it up because it's really boring. But then again, so are they. They're just cheap white plastic laminated MDF construction. And really unbefitting for a five-star hotel in my opinion. This is also where you'll find the standard hotel safe. I also wasn't impressed with the tacky plastic red curtain printed artwork behind the headboard. Those aren't real curtains, that's printed plastic. I really didn't like the red trim in this part of the room, especially the minibar that looked like it belonged behind the counter of a cheap Las Vegas strip bar. The whole room is starting to resemble one of those cheap honeymoon hotels in Las Vegas or Niagara Falls. Right, we need to talk about the minibar. Now, usually when I review a hotel, I criticise the minibar for being stupidly expensive. But this one is not unreasonably priced. It does, however, have hardly any stock in it. And the label on the door has a very surprising message. It states that the minibar will not be restocked during your stay unless you phone down to reception and specifically request it. What sort of rubbish business model is that? And what sort of service is that in a five-star hotel? Well, viewers, I think you can tell this room is really not impressing me. Let's take a look at the bathroom and see if that can change my opinion and redeem this room. Actually, the room isn't that bad. Now, personally, I dislike bathrooms with only a shower enclosure and not a tub. But remember, this is a historic building and I guess there just isn't room. The marble decker and the modern bathroom fittings and bright lighting make the best of not a huge amount of bathroom space. Looking back up from another angle, you can see there really isn't a huge amount of room in this bathroom, but it is more than adequate, but certainly for one occupant at a time. The shower was really powerful, which often you find isn't the case in historical building refits. So I quite like the bathroom in summary. There is free Wi-Fi in this room, but if you're working here on business, or if you work in the digital economy like I do, don't bother with it. Look 
at those download speeds via global speed test for this room, just 4.7 megabits per second, with an upload of a similar speed. Well, for the non-technically minded, that's utter crap. And for me, it was unworkable. Now, thankfully, I have 5G on my phone and I was able to use mobile data at 80 to 100 megabits per second. But I was using up my European roaming data at my own personal cost. For example, if I was going to move a one gigabit file around in the hotel's Wi-Fi, that would take 28 minutes to upload or download. At 5G, two to three minutes. If I'm paying 230 euros a night for a room, I expect better Wi-Fi than that. Not asking for Starlink, but I don't expect four megabits per second. During my busy time in Berlin, I really didn't have time to eat in the hotel's restaurant. In fact, I rarely eat in hotel restaurants, period. But for the sake of completeness in this video, I should mention that the hotel has an in-house restaurant called the Hasir Beef Grill Club, which specialises in meat and Turkish cuisine. The restaurant has four out of five stars on TripAdvisor and does come quite recommended, but you'll have to read TripAdvisor for yourself to draw your own conclusions. Although I didn't eat in Hasir in the evenings, I did have breakfast every morning at the hotel, which was incorporated in my room rate. Although you can pay, I think, 23 euros per person to have breakfast in the hotel if it's not in your room rate. Now, I thought breakfast was really good in this hotel. There is a large variety of European breakfast dishes in the morning, both hot and cold. It is all self-service, which I actually like for breakfast. The dining room is really large, spacious and atmospheric, not at all crowded like some restaurants. Yeah, I thoroughly recommend breakfast in the Titanic. The hotel bar was a favourite of mine. Well, aren't they all? You couldn't really call it a lobby bar because it's not that near the lobby. But it is great for pre-drinks before hitting Berlin on a Saturday night. The bar itself isn't that huge and it is a fairly intimate venue. And for that reason, I didn't really film in here. But... Germany is a home to the best beers in the world, and so is this bar. Brewed under the German purity law, the Reinheitsgebot. As you can see, the bar is quite low lit in the evenings, and it also serves as the bar for the in-house restaurant. I certainly really enjoyed it in here, and I do recommend it. There is also sports playing on an LCD TV behind the bar, but generally that is down to the bar staff to put on whatever matches on. The final facility I'm going to touch on in this video is the spa and wellness facilities. If you follow my YouTube channel, by now you'll know that I avoid these like the plague. And in this hotel, it's no different. Wellness to me is a pint of Erdinger in the bar. Spas are the exclusive territory of the Becky. If you don't understand what that is, look up the slang on the Urban Dictionary. But this hotel does have a gym, a spa, including a Turkish bath and a wellness centre in the basement, all available at extra cost. There is, however, no swimming pool. So in summary, on TripAdvisor, this hotel has a 4.5 star rating out of 5. And personally, that's hard to disagree with. The service throughout was excellent. And the lobby, the bar and the restaurant facilities, all fantastic. OK, I did not like the room or the decor at all. And I don't think the rooms are five star standard, certainly from my experience of that one room. Maybe that's just my personal tastes. Obviously, I wasn't impressed with the Wi-Fi, but as a YouTuber, my data needs are probably much greater than the average visitor who just wants to surf the internet for theater timings. For a five star hotel in the center of a major European capital city, 200 euros a night is really cheap. And of course, you are right at the heart of the action in Berlin, either for sightseeing or socializing. Do I recommend this hotel to you? Well, yes, but do look at the other five star options in Berlin Mitte. There are numerous and maybe you'll find something better. Would I stay here again? Probably not, to be honest. Sorry, Titanic. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, please give it a like. It really does help out us YouTubers with the Google algorithm. Anyway, bye now.